Hello, Michael here, bringing you a tutorial this time on specularity uh, and controlling it in Maya with RenderMan uh, through a couple of different methods. I'm mainly going to be focusing on specularity maps. Uh, you might remember this guy from last time um, that was in my displacement tutorial. Um, I've just been texturing him up throughout the week and um, applying some specularity here in 3D coat. I'm going to show you a couple of different workflows uh, to get this to work. Uh, quickly in 3D Coat and as well as ZBrush, um, there is also a method you can use. Um, I prefer 3D Coat because you get the uh, the visualization of the specularity while you're working on it, which makes it a little bit more intuitive. So I'm going to hop over to a simpler model for this one, uh, just to in, uh, decrease my render times, and um, we'll have a look at how we can get started with spe specularity. All right, so what I've got here is a pretty simple model I just quickly made up. It's a little tentacle. Um, and I'm going to paint some specularity on it uh, using just the specularity mode in 3D Coat and then I'm going to export that map out to Maya so only the regions in which I paint are going to be uh, have specularity applied to them um, so I'm going to make this pretty obvious so it renders out real nice and easy um, what you want to do if you're using 3D Coat you want to adjust your gloss uh, you want to have a layer specific for your gloss so I'm going to actually change this one to be called gloss um, and then you want to have your gloss intensity to 100 because you can adjust the gloss intensity in Maya. It's probably going to be easier to do it there. Your use case may vary, but um, for me, I just find it easier to do it this way. Opacity to 100 and smoothing to 100. Uh, this map is going to be 4K as well. Um, and just so everyone can see what I'm doing, I'm just going to paint them in stripes. So as you see, it's got a stripe of specularity there. I'll do another one here. Okay, so you can very easily see in the visualizer that um, you've got those three bands of specularity. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to export this texture map out um, using this export feature and just the glossiness map. Um, and you can do it as a targa, um, which is probably what I would do it as, and then just save it into your uh, like I've mentioned previously with the displacement map tutorial, you want to save it into your um, project file. I've already started a project in Maya, so this is going to be the spec map. Uh, you can call it whatever you want, but that's what I'm calling it. Uh, I just wanted to show you this really quickly in Photoshop so you'll get a better understanding um, of what I'm doing when I jump into ZBrush. As you can see, the specularity map is just alpha. It's just black and white and greys. Um, so the most glossy areas are going to be 100% white or 1.0 um, and the non-glossy or um, matte areas are going to be black or zero. Um, so it just kind of helps to understand what the maps look like before you're trying to figure out what you're going to do uh, if you're especially if you're going to do this in ZBrush with um, polypaint. Um, but yeah so that's what the map looks like and let's jump over into Maya now and see what it looks like on the model. Okay, so here is the model in Maya. Um, I'm going to apply a shader to it. Um, normally you would use like a just a Pixar Disney shader, which is useful most of the times. Uh, but to start off, what I'm actually going to do uh, is use a uh, Pixar Allen Plastic shader. And I'm going to apply that to him. Um, the reason is... Um, the reason is, with the specularity node, you actually get, um, you can actually control the bump map, which is something I'm going to be getting into in a little bit, uh, and the color, which is where you're going to plug your um, specularity into as well. I'm also going to apply uh, displacement to this um, and a normal map in a moment. Uh, actually, I'm going to quickly do the displacement map now. Okay, so this is what he looks like, um, just with the uh, with the um, displacement map applied to him, um, and and no adjustments to the specularity. So it's all, already got a default specularity to it, which is quite shiny. Um, but we're going to change that so you can just see those bands of specularity throughout. So if you bring up the hyper node editor, a uh, hyper shade editor rather, um, and you go into the specularity node. And you want to adjust the color with a color out node or in, I guess it would be. 
um, and we're just going to open up that spec map that I created in 3D code. And that should pretty much do it. Let's render it and see what happens. All right, so you can quite easily see that just those three bands of specularity are coming up. So that's really simple. Um, but there's a couple other tricks and tips that I will show you now, um, which will make your models look even cooler when you render them with specularity. Okay, so back in the Hypershade editor, what we're actually going to do is we're going to delete our specularity map um, because we don't want to use it just yet. Um, we don't want to use the one that we already have. So what we're actually going to do is under the specularity node, we're going to apply the bump map that I've already created uh, in ZBrush, which is just a normal map essentially um, from the high poly model I have. So I've got like a 600,000 poly version of this model with um, some details in it. So we're going to grab the, um, the normal map, which looks like this and apply it. Um, and I'm going to make some slight adjustments. Um, the main one is, let's just fix that. Okay. The main one is I want to change the bump depth down because it's a bit too high at that. I think 0.04 for this particular model works well. It will vary depending on the size of your model. Um, but for this one, I know that works. So let's render him and see what happens. Um, just a quick note, what you should also do is um, change the color of the specularity to be a bit whiter. The darker it is, the lower the value. So once again, uh, as I showed you before, it's like an alpha map. So black will be very little specularity and white will be high specularity. So we're going to put it about there and render it out. All right. So as you can see, he's completely specular again. Um, but what is the difference? Well, I've got a, high poly normal map applied to him. So what you're going to see if I just zoom in here is all this extra detail uh, on the surface. So the model underneath is still roughly 40,000 um, 40, polys uh, with with the displacement map. It's not a it's not a particularly high poly displacement map. Um, so you can still see it's quite smooth and you can see a little bit of banding in the surface there as well. But when you apply a normal map to your specular node, you get all this like surface level like dimples and stuff if you've like applied that sort of noise to your model. So you can essentially create a separate um, a separate surface to what you're like a surface that sits on top of your normal surface, which is just made up of specularity. Um, and I'm going to show you now why that's cool. So this is just a this is just sort of will give you some ideas of what you can do uh, with the LM plastic um, shader. But what if we use subsurface scattering? You get some extra effects, and I'll show you what they are now. So I've prepared one earlier. I'm just going to assign the material to him, um, and what you'll see is if I tidy up the scene. Um, okay, so stop that render. Uh, what you'll see is I've just got it set to defaults um, and in the specular map I've just got the bump map applied. Um, so let's see what the he looks like just at, um, at default. Okay so here it is rendered out. So you can see the difference it makes with just a just the standard um, subsurface scattering uh, shader applied to your model with the with the specularity turned up and a normal map um, applied to your specularity node as you can see here I've got the specularity set to almost 100% the roughness down to 0.1 um, and then a bump map applied out and it's got it's set to the same settings as uh, actually no I've set the bump depth uh, to the default which is 1.0 uh, and I think the color balance is the same yeah so I could actually back it off if I wanted to um, to get that to be a little bit more subtle, but just to show you sort of like the extremity of it That's probably kind of a good way to show it But as you can see for this sort of model, that's meant to be a creepy tentacle um, That's quite effective and I'll turn it around so you get a better view of the entire thing So it makes the model look a lot more effective overall um, You can see all those like bumps and stuff become because of the subsurface scattering with the with the raised um, surface on top of them they appear to be more uh, translucent than the model itself and it gives it that 
realistic sort of um, natural like texture like some sort of jellyfish or sea creature or deep sea creature might have so there is one more thing you can do here to make for this particular model to make it look even cooler and I'll show you what that is now okay so back in 3d coat um, what we're going to do is we're just going to color parts of the model with specularity that we want to be highlighted. So, um, and in this particular example, I'm just going to do the little the nodes all over the back of the te uh, all over the back of the tentacle. So, I'm just going to color those in really quickly. I'll probably speed this particular portion up. All right, so there it is, um, just with the specularity applied to the nodes. And then I'm going to export this and drop it into Maya and show you what it looks like with that subsurface scattering shader. Um, all right, so because we're, we're applying a map, obviously we're going to go into the specularity node again and go to the color node under that. And we're going to select that file, um, which is spec map 2. And then we're going to render them out. So we've got the bump map applied as well. And we've also got the specularity plugged into the color um, node of the specularity sub, um, sub node. All right. So as you can see, with the, with the bumps just uh, having the specularity applied to them, it almost looks like drops of water are sitting on the surface because it's, got a, because it's a subsurface scattering um, uh, shader applied to the model it's applying subsurface scattering to these very small shapes so a lot of light is actually passing through them um, and can be quite effective for a lot of different uh, things so if you had raindrops or something like that down the surface of a model um, and you just wanted to you could do it a couple of ways you could actually model it like this has got topology or you could do it with a normal map if you were just mainly looking at the the model or the mesh from straight on you could raise it with a normal map and then apply the specularity to the the, the drops of water if you wanted to or something like that um, but just really quickly for this one it kind of make it look quite effective I'd probably want to add a little bit more specularity to this model overall because there's not a lot going on otherwise because it's just a shape um, so like probably like some sort of wet areas underneath to make him look a bit creepier or something like that but um, you get the point there's a lot you can actually get done there and once you know how to do it and once you play around with a couple of different um, a couple of different um, of different models and, and different techniques so that is the basics of it all and I said I'd show you how to do this in ZBrush and I am not one to break my promises so uh, it's very simple. We're going to bring it ZBrush now. Um, here is the guy. Uh, I made him pink in, in um, ZBrush, but actually what I want to do is make him black um, because we are just painting the specularity. So similarly to um, how I did it with 3D code, um, we're going to change this to be 100% white. So the white areas are obviously going to be the areas um, that are going to achieve specularity um, and I'm just going to paint some whoop, I'm going to paint some white stripes just like the band uh, on the back there so we can see them and then I'm just going to go to multi map exporter texture from poly paint um, I've already UV mapped this I've got it set to the highest um, the, the highest um, what should we call it poly count um, so I'm going to get a high resolution texture out of it. This is at uh, 4K, create all maps. Um, and we're going to go into my project file. And back in Maya now, um, I'm going to keep the, um, the bump map applied, um, but I'm going to change that color node to be the new one which is really poorly named it's this one as you can see it's just those white stripes and now we're going to get a slightly bit of view and we're going to render it and there you have it simple as that um, and that is how you can do specularity maps in Maya um, so I only showed you two of the shaders that you can apply specularity maps to. I think you can do it in a couple of the other shaders as well. What you're really looking for under the specularity um, drop down or node is the color because that is going to be the, um, you're going to change the color of the map 
to be that alpha map like I showed you in Photoshop previously um, with that stripy map that I created um, so yeah it is just that easy um, it was a little bit weird for me at first I didn't think I was actually getting it right um, but once you sort of um, play around with it a little bit it becomes very easy and you can find some really artistic tools um, to really bump up your maps and obviously these are things that you can apply to human maps because there's a lot of specularity on a, on a person like um, even just on the face they're more specular around the nose and the eyes where the, where the thin is wrapped uh, tight over the mus over the over the bone um, and obviously like I said a bunch of other places so yeah if you do actually use this tutorial and come up with some cool ideas for it just drop me a comment and um, I'd love to see them um, otherwise I hope you liked this tutorial I hope it was easy to follow and not too long um, if you did like it click the like button so other people can see it as well and um, go ahead and subscribe because I'm still doing lots of tutorials for render man um, and I'll probably be doing some more for ZBrush and maybe 3D Coat. I'm not an expert in 3D Coat. I do like the program. Um, I just I only use it for painting, really. Um, but yeah, if, if there's anything that you're unsure about with, and with what I explained, just uh, drop me a comment and I'll get back to you. Um, or if there's any tutorials that you would like me to do, and if I know how to do it, I'd be quite happy to um, post one up real quick. Um, so yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed and happy rendering.